Right then, guys, this is a little bit of an extra one while I've got five minutes, okay? Uh, or nine minutes, however long this video is going to last for, yeah. I'm sitting in the soundproof booth with my dogged DAF t-shirt and I have BPW mug. Goes together like truck and trailer, doesn't it? Yeah. Right, so let's have a little uh, talk about electric vehicles, shall we, and alternatives. Now, I'm not keen on electric vehicles, not because they have more power available to them at the axles instantaneously and there's less moving components, that sort of thing. It's, when you think about the logistics involved of having to get the raw materials to be able to make them the extra copper and the lithium for lithium batteries, that actually involves geopolitics. Now, I'm pretty sure that part of this uh, fossil fuels is not just emissions, but it is to do with geopolitics and uh, having to buy oil from certain countries. Yeah, Russia, Saudi Arabia, places like that. Yeah, Venezuela. Yeah, there's a lot to it. But um, even from a point of view, from a person like myself who has an average wage and runs a car to and from work, okay, I can go out if I need to and buy something for 14 grand and get credit on it, but 40 grand for an electric or an EV one, no, that, that's, uh, that's prohibitive. Also, um, have a car park here, which there's no way of having anything charging uh, or charging points on here unless they're going to dig the whole place up and then wire it up and have uh, penny meters, you know, <laughs> put 50 pence in to get a charge out of it or something, yeah? It's all possible, but that's a massive infrastructure change. And they're talking in the next nine years, okay, so we've got 2030, um, petrol engines and diesel engines will no longer be manufactured, okay? Trucks, uh, agricultural machinery, plant machinery, that sort of thing, that's a different uh, time frame for those, but eventually they've got to get rid of the diesel engine and, and get to zero emissions, yeah? It's a done thing, yeah? And I, I can imagine some of you guys are thinking, in the future, it's like, yeah, okay, well, I've got to learn something else, which it probably isn't a bad thing. The chassis and the suspension and the wheel bearings and all that sort of palaver is still going to be the same, isn't it? The Teslas, the our managers of, uh, and our salesmen have got Teslas and they'll knock each other off about who's who's got the best one, either a uh, four-wheel drive or uh, one-axle drive. Yeah, they are actually quite powerful, but they have such a limited range. And it's so hilarious when you see them come into work in the morning and they've got to put the damn things on charge. We don't have charging points at the moment. Apparently, we're going to have those, um, and what they do is they plug an extension lead into a 13 amp socket and run the thing outside uh, with our extension leads and then charge their vehicles up. Yeah, okay. it's, it's quite hilarious to do, it's more of a palaver on the whole. Yeah, so you can imagine in our trade, the heavy goods vehicle trade, and you plant uh, fitters and bus fitters, vehicles are going to have to be off the road to be charged up overnight or whatever and I can imagine quite a lot of haulage companies will not be happy with that the extra cost that's involved in having uh, maybe two vehicles so they, they're at least uh, covering their haulage um, contracts yeah doesn't seem viable at all it just doesn't seem viable plus as well there's always the joke that you need a, a, a diesel generator along with a truck so you can charge the damn thing up yeah okay hybrid stuff seems to work because it's charging the batteries as it goes so it's using less fuel but they want to knock that out eventually as well don't they yeah so what i'm uh, gonna tell you is go and have a look at uh, harry's garage video this one's uh, interesting from a technician's point of view because it might clear a few things up lord banford and jcb are developing a hydrogen engine which doesn't involve using hydrogen fuel cells which are expensive and they're very fiddly to to actually get uh, something out of them in fact what they're doing is just turning a diesel engine into a gas powered engine yeah um which watching the whole thing which you have to watch the whole video through so you get the information it's all there of the potentials of having something that isn't actually going to cost any more to to buy than than a new vehicle with an internal combustion engine in it other than the fuel system and having a, a, a gas tank on there is to me it looks very viable so um 
Yeah, there are movements that way, which is interesting. And they've got Lotus Engineer, I can't remember his name. <laughs> you go and have a look at the video and you'll see uh, he's talking about the fact that there isn't that much to it. Yeah, it's just changing the cylinder head and the way the gas is, is burnt. Yeah, so it's spark ignition at the end of the day. Yeah. So the first impressions that I'm, I'm when I'm looking at this video, I'm thinking, yeah, but that's like LPG. And LPG is not very calorific compared to diesel fuel, but apparently not. Hydrogen has three times as much as diesel for bang for its buck, yeah? So that should be getting some ears pricked up and uh, some semis on thinking, yeah, actually, fuck. Okay. And hydrogen's easy to produce. All they do is just crack it, don't they? They split the oxygen uh, from the hydrogen, store the hydrogen, and when you burn it, it goes back, it goes back to water, doesn't it? Yeah, so... Uh, that's a no-brainer isn't it yeah so uh, it's worth watching the video and getting some information if you know nothing about it now and uh, listen to Lord Bamford talk because he's talking sense he's talking sense he does make uh, the comparison between a guy like myself um, who's just normal normal bloke uh, possibly could afford a four, uh, Vauxhall Astra and then having to step up to buy an electric vehicle it's it's unrealistic it really is unrealistic unrealistic i know i've only got a few years left in the trade so yeah okay once i'm retired then i can potter about yeah and my choice actually what i was going to do i'm going to explain it in the video on my other channel but i'm looking at getting a very basic uh, um la Deniva yeah you're going to be shocked at this they're very basic but they have a petrol engine which i was going to turn into lpg but if it's possible to turn it to hydrogen later wow that means there's not much conversion involved in it is there yeah no charging points for electricity you can go and fill up somewhere and i'm sure they can put the infrastructure in for hydrogen can't they yeah they've been doing it in california anyway um, so watch that space, watch that space, because I think JCB, a British company, a UK developed company, could actually be pushing globally something that's good for export, because they make their own engines, don't they, yeah? And the weight to uh, work ratio, and the power to weight ratio, and the fuel uh, time that's spent on uh, charging compared to uh, recharging a gas cylinder is, it, it is really just so simple yeah whether they're getting it to work or not i don't know but bamford is talking about his son who runs a bus company converting all his buses to run on hydrogen yeah so that isn't a big step in the wrong direction is it you know as guys as technicians we know what we're doing with the engines don't we if we're throwing electric motor and batteries and that you can imagine what sort of catastrophe there's going to be on occasion yeah, so go and watch the video. That's my advice today, you young'uns especially, and anybody who's, who's interested, because the, I think uh, if they get it right, then this has got more potential, <laughs> unless, of course, you're in a place that has no water, yeah, than, than it does uh, um, having electrical charge sockets, yeah? So, anyway, that's just my 10 pence worth on it. It's worth you doing your investigations if you're interested. Interested, yeah? Um just as another uh, point in case and i know some of you guys know i'm a bit of a weirdo when it comes to conspiracy theories and all that sort of thing i do think this global warming thing is actually a load of tosh from the point of view of emissions um i've been uh, watching certain videos and people explaining science and it doesn't make sense actually that we're producing a lot of carbon dioxide and plants grow off carbon dioxide and in carbon rich carbon dioxide rich environments they actually flourish yeah and soak up the carbon dioxide and grow quicker that's just one thing um science is there to prove it but also because of the weather patterns suddenly we're, we're getting very very unpredictable weather and it's, it's happening all over the world there's shit going on um if you're interested in alternative uh, arguments and scientific theories which is good to do without being obsessed about it yeah is go and have a look and do some investigation on the grand solar minimum which is about the way the sun is winding down for a few years does it every 400 years and as a result the magnetic fields and the weather changes on the planet our planet and that could explain why we're going through what we're going through which could actually uh, cause some problems with uh, short crop growing times yeah so it's worth a thought to look at if you're interested so anyway i'll leave the link below for this video on hydrogen engines yeah so you can have a look you get your head around it and then we're all good <laughs> yeah anyway until the next one see you later